Some workouts are like, I think my body is dying. I might poop my pants. Jasper. Jasper. Come get your new toy. Hi. Hello. Jasper, go get it. Catch it. Catch it. Jasper, catch. 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 No. Hello? Right, so it's been just over two years since my very first CrossFit class, so I thought I'd give you all an update on how things are going, whether I still do it, some of the pros and cons, and whether I recommend it, both from my personal experience working in the fitness industry and as a like practicing consumer of CrossFit and fitness in general. Now, I am aware that the previous CEO of CrossFit, good old Greggy Boy, has said some very shitty things, and this channel is about being less shitty, so we're not gonna give that any more airtime. So just know that this video is just gonna be pertaining to the sport, the style of workouts, etc., and not the shitty former CEO. Now, for those of you guys who are newer to the channel, my name is Joe. My background is in kinesiology, where I majored in sport performance, where I worked as both an in-person and online fitness coach, working with a variety of different populations. Now, this info, is important because within the fitness industry and I guess just you know to the public uh, CrossFit doesn't have the best rep. When I was a trainer, CrossFit was seen as this very elitist activity with very shit technique and it being very injury prone. So in my twisted little YouTuber head, I was like, mm, that sounds like a pretty good video. Let's go check it out. So that's how I filmed my first CrossFit workout in September of 2018. And honestly, I loved it. For those of you guys who have never heard of CrossFit before, this is how they define it. But simply put for myself, CrossFit is this activity or sport where it's just like a big mashup of everything. It's got a little bit of powerlifting, that strength component of bench press, squat, and deadlift. It's got that Olympic weightlifting component of the snatch and the clean and jerk. It's got a little bit of bodybuilding component because all of the CrossFit athletes are fucking shredded. But also when it comes to a volume intensity and even the type of exercises of some of the accessory work. It's very similar to bodybuilding and focusing on muscular hypertrophy. It's also got a big gymnastics component with the muscle ups, the handstands, etc. And it really just has a little bit of everything, which is what really drew me to it. Um, it was just something very interesting and something new and some of the skills I have never even attempted. And at that point, I was really just doing like a typical bro split while I was doing like chest and try, back and by, legs, or I would do like a push pull split split lower. Um, so I got very kind of like sick of that routine because I've been doing it for like two, three years before trying CrossFit. And you know, when I went to my first class and I saw these people doing like ring muscle ups and like climbing rope and shit like that, I was like, that's freaking cool. I wanna try that. So I think the best place to start is listing some of the pros and reasons why I enjoy CrossFit. The first point I already touched on, but there are just so many different ways to train that you're really not gonna get bored. And I just really enjoy how every workout really does feel new and different. The next thing I enjoy is that I really believe that CrossFit is one of the most efficient group fitness workouts when it comes to working different fitness parameters. For example, when you're just doing spin, sure, it's good cardiovascular exercise, Exercise, it might be good muscular endurance. However, you're not really getting that much benefit to your bone mineral density just because it doesn't have that axial loading. Um, you need some sort of weight bearing for that to happen. Let's consider Pilates. You know, it's got that flexibility, muscular endurance, but it doesn't have that impact. Whereas you look at a CrossFit class or any type of resistance training boot camp class, there are so many different dynamic aspects to the classes and the structuring of the programming. It really does fully encompass all the different fitness parameters that you wanna work on, whether you're an athlete, whether you're just an average Joe, just trying to get better at life and just move and just feel better about yourself. Um, it really does target so many different parameters. The next thing I enjoy is that you don't really have to worry about the programming just because when you go to a CrossFit class, everything's fully laid out for you. It's either on a monitor or it's on like a whiteboard and they list all the mobility work, they list all the stretching, they list all the warm up and the actual workout and the technical aspects, like everything is structured um, and you just have to go and listen to the coach. You don't have to worry about your own programming. You don't have to worry about, oh, I'm not really feeling motivated. 
All you have to do is just get through those front doors. Now, before I start talking about some of the not so great things about CrossFit, I actually have a class to go, which starts in 30 minutes. And I think it's gonna be good for you guys to see what a class structure is actually like. Keep in mind, this is the pandemic season. So everyone is in their own little boxes. So it's gonna be a little bit different, but most CrossFit classes start with a warm up, and then you go into like a technical or a strength portion where you just work on that one skill or activity. Today, I believe we're doing box squats and then you move into a more cardiovascular heavy, more metabolic conditioning um, aspect of a workout. And I think today it's gonna be wall balls and double unders, which is skipping. And I know that wall balls and skipping doesn't sound too like complex or difficult, but it's usually the workouts where it has like two or three like very simple movements um, that are just the absolute worst. Like it is brutal. So we'll see how this goes. All right, Jasper, I gotta go though, okay? Can you give me a fist bump? Jasper, pound it, pound it, pound it. Jasper, fist bump, you almost got it. Fist bump, please. Thanks, buddy. Okay, bye. <laughs> there was that first part which was like more strength and technical focus and then there was that second part which was the skipping and the wobbles which was a lot of cardio a lot of shoulder muscular endurance a lot of squatting and it was just uh, it was just gross hello hi hi and also before we continue with the video, I wanna give you guys a quick physique update because this is what my body looked like in September of 2018 at 160 pounds. And this is what I currently look like at 165 pounds. So I definitely put on a little bit of muscle, a little bit of body fat, uh, but overall I'm pretty content with how I'm looking right now. Not only that, strength gains for sure, but most importantly, the cardiovascular gains have been crazy. Um, probably because I didn't do any form of cardiovascular exercise before CrossFit, and now that I'm actually working on it, um, it's getting better, a lot better. All right, so next up, we're gonna be talking about some of the not so great things about CrossFit, and I think the first thing that a lot of people think of is the cost. CrossFit is not cheap. From all of the gyms that I've personally been to or worked with, um, they all range from anywhere from $190 per month to $250 a month, depending on how many months you sign for. And obviously when you compare that to a standard gym membership at a commercial gym, which is around $50 per month or cheaper, um, that seems like a lot. And it is. I'm not saying that CrossFit is affordable by any means. However, it's pretty comparable to any other smaller boutique group fitness class, whether it is spin, bar, yoga, all of those like smaller boutique studios tend to charge anywhere from 200 to 250 a month. However, when you compare CrossFit with let's say one-on-one -on -one personal training, one-on-one -on -one personal training ranges anywhere from 60 to $90 per session. So let's say it's like $70 per session. Let's say you go Monday through Friday, that's gonna run you around $1,400 per month. Now, obviously when you go to a CrossFit class, it's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's like one V, 10, but comparing $200 a month to $1,400 a month um, is a big difference. And you still are getting that coaching, you still are getting that programming. The coaching isn't just going to be as comprehensive as it would be if it was one-on-one, -on -one, but it all depends what you're looking for. The next thing I'll say is that how good the CrossFit class is, is really highly dependent on 
the coach. Personally, I've had nothing but good experiences with all the coaches, both in Edmonton and Vancouver, but I have heard some nightmare stories. They're usually like the clips you see on YouTube, whether it's the coach not queuing properly, whether it's the athlete themselves not listening, the coach has to be the one to say, hey, your form is looking like shit. You are not gonna go up in any more weight until your technique gets better. And at the end of the day, it all just depends on the coach's, I guess, coaching style. When you go to multiple classes with different coaches, you're just gonna vibe and connect with different coaches' methodologies a little bit better. Some coaches are super, super thorough, and you know they explain every little detail, whereas some coaches kind of skim through things so it just really depends what type of coach you get I don't think this issue is specific just to CrossFit whether you go to like a spin studio or a yoga instructor each instructor or coach has a different way of teaching um, so you just got to find the ones that work for you the last gripe I have about CrossFit is that I don't believe that uh, Olympic weightlifting movements should be used as a conditioning tool. So I'm talking about the clean and jerk and the snatch, just because they are so technical of movements. When you have to do 10 snatches, 10 bar over burpees, and 30 double unders for five rounds, there is no way on that fifth round, the 10th snatch is gonna be proficient. It's just gonna be very sloppy, and we don't want sloppy snatches in the gym. I have no problems with doing the Olympic weightlifting movements in that strength or technical portion of the workout. I just don't think it should be at a high volume at that intensity. If it's going to be in that workout, I think it's gonna be at a low volume with a moderate to high you know, intensity. However, just high volume Olympic weightlifting work with other things in that workout just usually ends up being a disaster, especially because the majority of the people that go to a CrossFit class are just general population, just people that sit at an office for the majority of the day, then they finish work, go to the CrossFit gym, and then they gotta do like 50 snatches. No, I just, that's personally my opinion. Other than that guys, that's pretty much it for this video. That was my two year CrossFit review. Hopefully it helps some of you guys out, answer some of your questions. If you guys have any more questions, leave them in the comment section down below. I think that's pretty much it. Overall, I love it. I love the cult, I mean community. I love the workouts and I kind of like how beat up you feel after some workouts. Not all the workouts, after some workouts, I'm like, you know what? That was a good, you know, just move your body around kind of session. Some workouts are like, I think my body is dying. I might poop my pants, but you know, it's all part of the process and not every workout is like that. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and remember to be less shitty. Thanks guys. Come here so I can give you tummy rubs. Oh, big stretch, buddy, big stretch. Can I give you some tummy rubs? Can I give you some tummy rubs? Jazz, flip over. No, you don't want to flip over. Okay, let's give these guys a goodbye boop. Three, two, one, boop.